Hey there guys, welcome back and today I'll be covering a new what if on my channel and the reason I want to cover this is because me and my mate brainstormed it and it actually sounds a little fun, a little far-fetched but stick with me here. Um, I did put Goku in the MCU, That's this is nowhere near that far-fetched. Now, the what if I want to talk about is what if King Cold came to Namek instead of the Ginyu Force? Now, I can see this happening just by the Ginyu Force being away on another mission for King Cold or for Freezer, and he just completely forgot they were away on a mission. Not that it's his personality to forget, but, you know, he rules an empire. He's got a lot to think about. And being close to Namek, just generally, he King Cold offers to go in their place. He doesn't know why he needs the Ginyu Force. He's perfectly strong. If anyone did... If it's someone the Ginyu Force can deal with, Freezer can deal with it. However, he does offer to go. Freezer doesn't really like the idea of his dad coming. But after thinking about it for a while, it would be fun to see everyone tremble underneath the two, you know, father and son's power. After all, King Cold is stronger than Freezer, and I can imagine that sort of rubs Freezer up the wrong way. Um, so, takes probably... Probably takes King Cold the same amount of time it took the Ginyu Force to get there. He, there. He's in a much bigger ship, probably a little, might be a bit further away. So let's just save myself the headache of doing time on Namek because it's really weird for him to say he comes about the same time as the Ginyu Force arrive. <laughs> now, when he arrives, unlike the Ginyu Force, he doesn't leave straight away. He doesn't hear what the mission is and just leave straight away he goes to find out what his son really is here for he sort of knows sort of doesn't he's a little bit in the dark here and Freezer explains to him how he's collecting the Dragon Balls to make a wish for immortality and King Cold is confused by this because Freezer is probably one of the strongest beings in the galaxy just below himself and Lord Beerus and Boo, who haven't been around for years, so he's not too worried about them. Now, Freezer does explain that he just wants to mess around with the universe for a few, well, eternities, just to see what happens. Um, and King Cold, not really bothered, just sort of goes along with it. He says, yes, you can do what you want. As King Cold does spoil him a bit now once king cold does arrive on the planet everyone can sense it it's not very subtle vegeta who is still sort of getting the hang of sensing energy can sense how strong he is he can tell he's above freezer but that's about it that's where he can place him um he can't place him freezer too like too close to anyone but you can definitely tell from, you know, just how much energy there is. King Cold is definitely above Freezer. Which is scary to Vegeta because he knows there's a huge difference in his and Freezer's power. And now this new, stronger power shows up. It's a little bit unnerving for them. Now, Krillin and Gohan, who are a bit more, you know used to sensing energy i just terrified they are absolutely like they're paralyzed in fear almost they were already sort of punching above their weight being on namek like yeah they got their potential unlocked by guru but even after that vegeta was still stronger than them frieza was still stronger than them you know there was a lot of things happening that weren't working out in their favor and now they're sort of panicking a bit. They don't really know how to respond. And they are with Vegeta at this point in time. It's when they have the like squabble over the Dragon Ball. And Gohan and Krillin are a little bit more like maybe we should... Vegeta, we definitely need you. Just join us, please. And Vegeta also sort of being able to tell where they, King Cold is. He agrees. But it's a bit more of it's a bit of a more stable alliance, unlike with the Ginyu Force. 
Vegeta thought he could possibly win against Raccoon. He thought he might stand a chance. But with this, he just isn't... He's, like, not even thinking about winning at all. Now, af the first thing the group does is instantly, instantly cut their power, like, to the absolute minimum it can be. Like, basically nothing. Hoping to just blend in with a twig, hopefully. But Vegeta, who's not so great at lowering his power, who's still sort of new to everything here, just, he can just drop it a lot, he can drop it enough, but it's not unnoticeable. If a scouter was to pick him up, it might be worth inspecting. But the best they can hope is they just think it's another Namekian. Or absolute best, it's another Freezer Soldier. That would be ideal for the team. And Krillin and Gohan already know where they want to go. Like right now, they want to head to the strongest ally they have on this planet, which is at Guru's house. So Vegeta, with the Dragon Ball they have, head off towards it. And they are just left very slowly making progress towards Guru's house. Now, over with King Cold, the last, may a little bit of time has passed. He sent out a squad to go look for this final Dragon Ball his son so dearly wants. And during this time, Frieza has sort of whined and complained about the fact his two favourite henchmen have died. It's quite upsetting to him. He was quite fond of Zarbon and Dodoria. So, you know, he's sort of having his little whinge moment. And King Cold just says he will get him some stronger henchmen. Plus, he, he still has the Ginyu Force. They are a bit weird, but he still has them. Now, I would say it, uh, a while has passed. Probably enough time for Goku to be entering Namek's atmosphere. Vegeta, Krillin and Gohan have made it to Guru's house, where Nail doesn't even know what to do. Nail is probably the strongest ally they have on this planet at the minute, or before Goku landed, and he doesn't really even stand a chance. Um, Guru's panicking. Anyone who can sense energy is panicking. Let's put it like this. That is like what's going through their head. And right now, keeping that one Dragon Ball they have is very important. Now, over with Goku... He can. He's probably just entered the atmosphere, and he can already feel King Cold's power and Freezer's power. And it sort of hits him. He stands out a little bit like a sore thumb because he sort of can't sense with Gohan and Krillin, so he's having a little bit of a moment panicking. Um. So what happens is very simple. Goku just instantly powers down as well. They don't really have much time. They can't really fight back against this so standing out like a sore thumb on a scouter is just not the way to do it now it, when he's lowered his power to a, like a happy level he takes a bit of time to search out for everyone's energy he's looking for sort of a a ripple in a wave no not a wave a tsunami of power which is generating off Freezer and King Cold. And eventually he does find something. He finds Vegeta's power, who's sort of fluctuating up and down. So he hopes for the best and heads there, knowing at least that's someone he knows. Worst case scenario, he's killed Krillin and Gohan, and he can just kill Vegeta there. Best case scenario, he doesn't know where they are. And when he, as he gets closer, he can start to feel some more familiar energies he's like well, that sort of sense i can sort of sense piccolo there but it's not piccolo might be a namekian and then as he gets closer he can sense krillin and then gohan and then he's pretty much there he can see what's happened at guru's house he sees sort of the panic around everyone but god krillin and gohan are happy to see him but they don't know what to do because goku is just complete and utterly honest with them he says i don't stand a chance against that 
Goku normally is someone who would just jump straight into the action. He knows if he gets into this, he won't be able to revive all of his friends on Earth. So he decides to play it smart and just, you know, figure out a plan. Now, this upon Goku's arrival, Guru sort of tries to sense out what Goku, who Goku is. Try and get a grip, grasp of what's happening with this Goku. Nail can sort of tell he's a friend with the better half of this shady alliance, which is Gohan and Krillin. And he's not really friendly towards Vegeta. So this is sort of helping Goku's argument here. And while they were waiting for Goku to arrive, they were discussing a plan on defeat, trying to defeat them, or obtaining those Dragon Balls. And they have come up with some good ideas, but nothing they think could 100% work. It's a bit more in force with Goku here now. They have a higher chance of winning with Goku, but they're not 100%. Now, after a few minutes of them trying to figure out what to do, they do come up with the idea that they need to get rid of the weaker one first. So they are just going to, they're going to hope to get rid of Freezer. If they can just leave one big power, they might be able to figure out something. Vegeta does have an idea. He hates this idea, but he has an idea. And as he explains it to the group, the group all sort of agree. It's like, yeah, that's a good idea. They're going to try and lure Freezer away and then off him while he's by himself. And hopefully, King Cold will chase after whatever happened to Freezer. Now, before they take off to do this plan, Guru does call in Nail to bring Goku inside. And after scanning up and down Goku, and after these few minutes of, you know, sort of seeing what he's all about, he has come to the conclusion that he is not a selfish person, he's very kind-hearted. However, he fights for fun. And he isn't a 100%... He's 100% good, don't get me wrong. But his motivations sometimes are a bit... He wants to fight. But he can tell right now, Goku is 100% serious to get rid of this, you know, threat on his planet. So Guru unlocks Goku's potential. Now, initially, Krillin and Gohan got... Actually, both got a 7.5 times multiplier, putting them about 11,000 from 2,000. Now, giving Goku this first initial multiplier puts him at a power level of 675,000, just above Freezer's first form. Goku is a little bit more confident. He does believe, he now knows he can probably win in a fight against him. And worst comes to worst, a Kaioken. And this does sort of comfort the group, saying, with Goku saying, yeah, I could probably beat the weaker one now with Vegeta sort of interrupting saying well actually that one can transform and putting everyone back down to you know the lowest level of fear ever um now Guru does explain that his power is going to increase a little bit more over time and hopefully this will be enough power to at least get rid of one of them just one of them that's all he needs <laughs> like that the group sets off they head towards just a vast open area and they wait for a few scouts to go by and Vegeta shoots them down. Vegeta also picks up their scouters and he says down the mic of the scouters that Freezer can come to his coordinates right now and get the last Dragon Ball if he agrees to make a deal with Vegeta. Now, Vegeta is sort of smart in this sense. He could probably play out Freezer like this. And he actually does lure Freezer out. Freezer comes alone, well, he leaves alone, and he is on his way now. King Cold, not really caring, thinking his son's the strongest and all of that, just decides he'll sit back there and just look after the Dragon Balls, maybe have some wine. I don't know what King Cold does in his free time. Um... And 
When Freezer arrives to this open area, he's met by Nail and Vegeta. They're the only two stood there with the Dragon Ball. Vegeta make, cracks out the deal to Freezer, saying, I will give you the Dragon Ball if you agree to let me leave the planet and live out the rest of my life on, without you holding over me. And Freezer thinks about it. He will be annoyed. He's sort of angry that Vegeta has the balls to make this deal. However, Vegeta is sort of hot, getting ready to sort of blow up the ball. He sort of knows how much Freezer wants this. And eventually, Freezer does agree and asks, What is the Namekian doing here? Nail then speaks up and says, Well, you need to be able to speak Namekian tongue to awaken the dragon. And I will awaken the dragon, give you your immortality wish, and but then you have to leave my planet alone. This is really annoying, Freezer. He didn't want to make a deal with Vegeta, but now he's got to make a deal with a Namekian as well. It's really annoying him. However, he does accept this. He thinks well, immortality is just that close then. And if they try to do anything funny, I can just, you know, kill them. He agrees. And it's at this point where Freezer starts walking towards him to shake Vegeta's hand. And Vegeta and Nail just zoom backwards real fast. With a beam landing straight in front of Freezer. But him dodging it, and it wasn't really anything to worry about. His scout picked it up. It probably topped off about 24k. And then he feels a split down the centre of himself. He f can't really feel his legs at the minute. He had been cut in half by Krillin's Kianzon. And he's angry as hell. But before he can even let out a word, a scream of anger... He's hit by a small key orb, which expands out and just utterly disintegrates him. Freezer's been taken out quite swiftly by just a little bit of work from Gohan, using the Senko to lure him backwards. Ooh. And Krillin cutting him in half with the Kenzon. They were hoping it would kill him. But just in case, they had Goku collecting a spirit bomb. Just in case. Now, the spirit bomb might be a bit of an overkill, but they didn't want to risk it. If the Kienzon didn't kill him, they were going full. They were going all in. It wasn't a large spirit bomb. It was a one-handed one, like he did against Vegeta. But it seemed to have worked. Freezer's dead. There's nothing left of him. And all King Cold heard down the mic of Freezer's scouter was just an eruption of, you know, an explosion. He doesn't hear anything back from Freezer. He doesn't hear anything back from anyone. Vegeta destroyed the Scouter. And now he's pissed, because he doesn't know what's happened. He doesn't like not knowing what happened. However, that is where I'm going to end this what if for today. I know I've cut it off at a bit of a weird point, but I was sort of hoping this what if episode would be a bit shorter than it was. And I've already been going on for 18 minutes. So I'm going to call it here and I'll probably continue this depending on how everyone likes it. Leave a little bit of feedback um, and I just want to say thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you have a good day or a good night and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye.